our first contributors this evening. Um, uh, his name is Alex Robinson. He's an award-winning travel writer and photographer. Uh, he has written uh, The Brat Guide to Bayer, and uh, he has another one about to come out um, to an area of Portugal, which I'm going to pronounce very badly, but it's Alentejo. Alentejo. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's where I, I got married, I knew so was, I know. I knew was Kate useful. was there. I, I knew he was useful <laughs> for something. Um, now, Alex is going to come up and tell us uh, a very hair-raising tale about mm. the perils of driving with a full bladder. Alex. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thanks very much to Hilary and, and Brat uh, for giving me the opportunity to be in this wonderful book. And uh, secondly, I'd like to say I just got back from Brazil. This story, um, tale, real, true story, um, is Brazil-based. And it may put some people off Brazil, but I just got back from Brazil, and I still completely love it. And it's a wonderful place where you can really get off the beaten track and transfer money, as Simon said, from, from, from rich England to some, some poorer parts of the world. Anyway, I thought I'd uh, set the scene, because I'll read a little bit of, an, uh, of, of the tale, which is in, which is in the book. Um, so what happened was it was on the day of the London bombing, um, and I was living in Sao Paulo at the time with my Brazilian wife, Gardenia, and my son, Rafael. And I'd just won this wonderful commission for about two pounds from a newspaper, which I won't mention. <laughs> And it was my first ever non-travel commission. I, I, had to, I, was, uh, I was going to interview Salman Rushdie, which was a, a big thing for me, at the Literary Festival in Parachi, which is on the Brazilian coast. And anybody who has a vague idea of the geography of Sao Paulo and the Brazilian coast, where Parachi is, um, will, will, will know what the journey involves. But for those who don't, it was about a, a five-hour drive along a motorway, and then you have to cut down from the motorway along a, a road through the mountains to the coast and then you reach Parachi. Now, the road which connects the motorway to the coast is a bit of a notorious one for uh, bandits. Anyway, I found myself on this road after having left late, because I was, I was ringing around to check that everybody in London was OK, because you know, the, the, the news was, you know, it, it sounded like the whole city had exploded. Um, uh, and so I was ringing around. I left late, um, and I found myself on the road from the motorway down to the coast with an extremely full bladder. So I said, oh my God, what am I going to do? It's this bandit highway, and I'm desperate for a piss. So I, I got out of the car, and somehow, uh, in a way which I still don't understand, the door swung shut and locked. And this was a Fiat Uno. The keys were in the ignition, the engine was running, and um, I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? So I picked up a stone, and, and, I, and I went, uh, like this against the window. <laughs> I said, no, I've got to break it. I have to hit it hard. So I went, Ugh. But I, ju I just did not have the courage to break the window of, of, of my own car. So I flagged down for help, and these two very affable Brazilians stopped. And they said, oh, you know, what's happened? Oh, and we were chatting. You know, in, in Portuguese is an extremely informal and, and friendly language, and it's difficult to express how it feels in English. But um, they seemed just like the, the nicest guys in the world. You know, where are you going? Ah, oh, I'm going to Parachi. And they helped me get in. It didn't, it didn't strike me as odd that they managed to break off the area of the car, twist it into a loop. And, 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 and I thought, ah, oh, these are nice guys. These are nice guys. Anyway, so, so got into the car. They said bye-bye. I'd foolishly told them where I was going. Anyway, two hours later, I was on the road to Parachi. And it cuts up over a, a, a mountain pass, a little mountain pass. And, and it's, a, it's an area shrouded in rainforest. It was raining by this time. Um, and it was dark. And there was nobody on the road at all. Uh, and then their car sped past me after about half an hour on this, this lonely stretch of road. And I thought, oh my god, OK, that's their car. And I've been in Brazil long enough to know that that meant trouble, because if a car you haven't seen for two hours overtakes you and it belongs to these two people, then you know that you're in for trouble. Anyway, so they blocked off the road. I got over this crest of hill. Their car was across the road. I swerved round, and then they were chasing me. And I got to this little, the edge of this tiny little settlement, and there was a mechanic's house there. The light was on. It was pouring with rain. 
And I thought, okay, I'll pull in here. The mechanic will come out of his house, and I'll be okay, because they're not going to do anything in front of anybody else. So I pulled in, and he didn't come out of his house. <laughs> and these guys got out of the car with two bloody great guns, and I'd never really seen guns before. These things looked enormous. It was like something from a Clint Eastwood film. And one guy had his hand over his lips like this, shh. He got in the car next to me, and his friend got in their car, and then they said, okay, let's go. And the, he directed me, and I ended up driving up this dirt road. They took all my stuff. It was pitch dark, in the middle of absolutely bloody nowhere. Anyway, and then, after taking all my stuff, this is basically what happened, and I'll read you this extract from, from the story now. Okay, so then he turns to his friend. Guto's gun is still pointing at my head, and he says slowly and nonchalantly, okay, Guto, kill him. We'll burn his car. In that moment, something shifts deep inside, behind the mind, deeper even than my emotions. They fade, disappear, and in a second, I sense everything. The rain slows until it falls like plankton, drifting through the current in deep sea. It gathers on a leaf, pools, and gently drips off. Even in the dark, the greens are so intense, they almost seem illuminated, and my nose fills with the scent of the forest, the sharp spiciness of the razor grass, the dampness of mycelia and epiphytes, the rich oxygen filled air. A thousand Im images and impressions flood into my mind, childhood, school, my parents' home in Sussex, Bristol, Cambridge, India, Gardenia, my wife, in Hackney. At home, I see Ashishta in his room in Mirtola, high in the Indian Himalayas, holding out a coin. Can you see it? He asks. Can you see that you see it? What happens to the seeing when I take it away? And then I see my son, Raphael, in his chair at breakfast, chocolate all round his mouth. And I have clarity. I'm here. Now. And I look the older man straight in the eye, deeply, down into the depths of that darkness, into him. Do you want my three-year-old boy to be left without a daddy? I ask. Take it, all my stuff. I don't know who you are or why you're here. I don't care. You can have it all. He stares back at me. And suddenly he sees me and is a man, a sad, a desperate man. He pauses, and Guto pauses. It's all happened in a moment. Where did you meet us, he asks. I, I don't remember. What kind of car do we have? I don't know. I know everyone in Parachi. If you tell the police, I'll find you. He has my ID document, my address. I'll kill you and your family. Then he looks up to the sky. Deus me olia, he cries. Look at me, God. I'm letting this gringo go free. Be my witness. Walk up the road, gringo. Don't look back. Don't come back for half an hour. I set off. Gringo, he calls me back. Take your coat, handing me my jacket. It's raining. <laughs> up the dirt track, up the dirt track. Forest all around me, forest, up the dirt track. Walk, don't look back. I'm over the brow of a tiny hill. They can't see me. I fall out of a trance. I'm in the middle of the road. What the hell am I doing? I run into the trees, 20, 30, 40 meters into the dark, into the thick forest, just in time. Their pickup roars up the road. It halts just 30 meters from me, but I am lost in the dark. The trees are all around me. Stound your field, that puta. Where is the bastard? The older man shouts out above the noise of the engine and the roar of the rain. I'm here, I think. And I'm free. And there is only life, awareness, and bliss.